I'm sure it feels very real to you. On August 29th, 1997, it's gonna feel pretty fucking real to you, too. Anybody not wearing two million sunblock is gonna have a real bad day, get it? Good, you think you're safe and alive? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, and verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I want to give all honor and glory and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rechav, Kodash, Prakthi, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh meaning He is or He exists, the true name of God in the Paleo Hebrew, Bahashim meaning in the name, and Yahweh Shai means He saves or the Savior, the true name of the Messiah in the world through ignorance, of course, Jesus Christ, the Rechav, Kodash, the Holy Spirit, that allows me to teach with sincerity and in truth. Double honor to the elders and apostles of GMS, peace and salutation to the hopeful elect out there pushing his word in truth and sincerity. Okay, and the title of this one is going to be The Word of the Heavenly Father is the most valuable thing on the planet. All right, this knowledge that we have, okay, this uh, faith that we've been blessed with, right, the understanding we've been gifted with, all right, it's the most valuable thing on the planet. All right, and nothing can be compared to it. All right, as I just read. All right, so therefore, we're the most valuable thing on the planet, all right, because this knowledge is, all right, uh, this faith is within us, okay? So I want to start off in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, right? I have a few precepts lined up. I don't want to die. all right, Lord willing, this video is edifying. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, and verse 7. Wherefore, I prayed, and understanding was given me, all right? This is a prayer, or this is what King Solomon has said, all right? He says, wherefore, I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called upon the Most High, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. All right, so that's what our forefather King Solomon prayed for. All right, that's what he asked the Most High. All right, for wisdom and understanding. All right, now let's grab Second Chronicles chapter one. All right, because we gotta ask for the same thing. All right, the apostles asked. All right, the apostles asked Yahweh Shai to increase their faith. All right, so we gotta ask the same thing. And when we, you know, let, let me just read it. Second Chronicles chapter one, in verse ten. It says, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? This is a prayer from King Solomon. All right. He's praying to the most high, asking him for wisdom and knowledge. All right. So that he can judge righteously. Verse 11. And the power, all right, and the most high said to Solomon, because this was in thy heart and thou hast asked, and then thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thy enemies, neither yet has asked long life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself. But thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. See, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. See, so the most I basically blessed them, all right, with, with things that he didn't even ask for. Okay, King Solomon just asked for wisdom and, and, and understanding and knowledge, all right, but the most I said, listen, because you had your priorities straight, all right, because you prioritized me. I'm not going to only give you wisdom and knowledge, but I'm also give you riches. All right, I'm going to give you wealth. Okay, I'm going to give you honor, all right, as no other king has had before me. Okay, so you know, just putting that into perspective. As long as we keep you know, the main thing, the main thing, the Most High is going to bless us with everything that we need. Everything else is going to fall in line. All right, as long as as long as we have our priorities straight. You see? So let's go back to that wisdom of Solomon chapter seven. Okay, wisdom of Solomon chapter seven, in verse. Um, verse 7 again. Wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me. I called upon the Most High and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her before scepters and thrones and esteem riches nothing in comparison of her. See that? King Solomon preferred wisdom, understanding more than scepters and thrones. So he valued the wisdom of the Most High more than his own throne. Okay? Alright? He didn't think that riches can compare to her. 
All right, and we can read certain accounts within the scriptures of our forefathers who had the same exact mindset. All right, let's grab Hebrews chapter eleven. Because, because imagine that. All right, imagine being a king. All right, you have you have what you have you have honor, you have wealth. Right, you got all the women in the world, all the power, and influence. All right, everybody kisses up to you. All right, but King Solomon said he preferred wisdom over that. Okay, Hebrews chapter eleven verse twenty four. All right, this is another one of our righteous forefathers, Moses. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11. Where shall I start? Verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Right? During the time of Egypt, during the time of the Exodus. Okay, you have Moses, who was the, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Right? He was one of the most, well, he was put in a position to be one of the most powerful people on the planet at that time. All right? Because Egypt was a superpower at that time. That would be compared to America today. All right? So, Moses was a billionaire back then, right? So it says, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You got you to gotta think about that, all right? Moses, he declined his, I would say, his, uh, his power seat, all right? Choosing rather to suffer affliction, all right, with his people, all right, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. All right, because sin is temporary. Wickedness is temporary. All right, righteousness is, is eternal. Okay, verse 26. Esteeming the, the reproach of Hamashiach greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. All right, now you got to really put that in perspective as well. All right, Moses, the mindset that he had, he thought that it was better to be reproached. All right, for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Okay, he thought that was more valuable than the, the riches in Egypt, the treasures in Egypt. Okay, like I said, Egypt was a superpower at that time. It, it, was, it was the dominant power force in the earth. It was like America today. Okay, and Moses, he was one of the top guys there. So he would have been a billionaire, a trillionaire. Okay, but he chose rather to be the, the most wanted man. Because when you go into the story, all right, after you know, he neglected, okay, being Pharaoh's daughter, he was like one of the most wanted men in the world at that time. Okay, but he thought being the most wanted man, being hated, all right, by the majority, Okay, that was more valuable to him because he was uh, esteemed in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. All right, he was approved in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. Okay, so it says, esteeming the reproach of Hamashiach greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. All right, he, what? he had foresight. Okay, a lot of our forefathers had foresight. They was able to see. So lucky I got interrupted. All right, but yeah. Okay, a lot of our forefathers had foresight to see into the future. All right, and they made moves accordingly. Okay, and it's the same thing here with us today. Okay, like the scripture says, oh, here, all right, here we have no continuous city, but we seek one to come. All right, so we understand the kingdom of heaven is right around the corner. All right, in the kingdom of heaven, that's where we're going to have our true riches, all right, real gold and silver, okay, and be able actually to live, all right, and enjoy life. Okay, but right now, we're keeping the main thing, the main thing, we're prioritizing, we're getting our priorities straight, just like King Solomon did. Okay, we understand everything else is going to fall in line. Okay, so let's go back to that wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. All right, wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, in verse uh, 8, again, it says, I preferred her before scepters and thrones, and esteemed riches, nothing in, in comparison of her. Neither compared I unto her any precious stone, because all gold in respect of her is as little sand. All right, now when it's talking about her, it's talking about wisdom. All right, and wisdom in the Greek is Sophia. Okay, so wisdom can be accounted to as a woman. So it says, neither compared I unto her any precious stone, because all good in respect of her is as little sand, and silver shall be counted as clay. You see that? So wisdom, right, being uh, compared to gold, gold would be little sand. Silver would be as clay. Okay, why? Because ultimately gold and silver, it, it comes and goes. All right, let's say you got some gold, let's say you got some silver. All right, there's always a new bill that you got to pay for. All right, and there's always a new mouth that you have to feed. All right, so those type of things, materialist things of this world, is temporary, it's transitory. Okay, or somebody could steal it. All right, like our Lord, let's grab Matthew 6, okay? Let's say you did have a lot of gold, a lot of silver, and you was fairly wealthy. All right, what's stopping somebody to just take it from you? Matthew 6 and verse 19, red letter, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, and with these break through and steal. All right, so ultimately, treasures upon this earth, materialistic things of the world, is temporary. Okay, it's here one day and it's gone the next. It could vanish. Okay, or like, uh, basically uh, wither away, 
All right, or somebody could take it. Verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do have corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. You see, and that's what we have. This wisdom, this knowledge, this understanding that we have is treasures in heaven. Okay, we're wealthy, we're rich in the eyes of the heavenly father. Okay, and technically the elect, you know, Lord willing, we be part of that number, are the most wealthiest people on the planet already. Okay, all right? Because the kingdom, like the scripture says, the, the, the most is not a man that he should not lie. The kingdom is going to come, all right, whether people believe it or not. All right, and the elect, the 144,000, starting with the 144,000, right, starting with our Lord Yahweh Shai, those are going to be the most wealthiest, most powerful uh, powers, people, all right, in the galaxy, in, in the universe, okay? So it says, verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, so whatever we value, all right, as an individual, that's where our heart is going to be, okay? So we have to value the wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, going back in verse... Oh, I wanted to grab John 6. Yeah, I wanted to make this point as well. I had this piece of lined up. All right, I'm glad I just remembered John 6, where Allah Yahweh Shai said. All right, because we're talking about, you know, uh, materialistic things of this world and how it's temporary, okay, and eventually withers away. Okay, Yahweh Shai being our wisdom, it never withers uh, with away. All right, it's eternal. John 6 and verse uh, 27, which is what Yahweh Shai said. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting. Okay, so applying that in the spirit, you know, he's talking about actual food right here because he had right, a multitude of people who was following him around because he fed them. They wanted free food. All right, but he's, saying, he's telling them, labor not for food. Okay, applying in the spirit, labor not for, for materialistic things of the world, which perisheth, comes and goes, offer us doeth corrupt. It says, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath the most sight the Father sealed. Okay, so that's this wisdom that we have. It leads to everlasting life. That's what we labor for. That's what we fight for. Okay? Jumping on down, I'm going to start at verse 33. It says, For the bread of the Most High is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, give, evermore give us this bread. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now imagine that. All right? Imagine you eat a piece of bread and you're never hungry again. All right? Imagine you drink a glass of water and you never thirst again. Like ever in your life, as long as you live. Okay, that would save you a lot of money, right? That bread, that water would be worth incredible riches. That would solve, right? Uh, that would solve world hunger. Okay, so it would be, it would have a label, it would have a a, a dollar label that you can't, that you, you, you can't even put a dollar, a dollar label on it. All right, so that's Yahweh Shai. That's the wisdom that we get. All right, that's the benefits that we get when we come into the truth. Okay? Yahweh Shai, man. All right, we never hunger, we never thirst. So let's jump back. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, in verse 10. It says, I loved her above health and beauty and chose to have her instead of light. For the light that cometh from her never goeth out. You see? All right. And there's a scripture that says, all right, he sent forth his word and healed them. You see that? So ultimately, come having the word within you, all right, we're healed. We're healed where? In the spirit. All right, and that's where it counts. Okay, being healed in the spirit, right? Being comforted, you know, in the spirit is, is where it truly matters. Okay, so it says, I loved her above health and beauty and chose to have her instead of light, for the light that cometh from her never goes out, right? And that light is who Yahweh Shai, right? It never goes out, all right? He's the light that came into the world. It says, verse 11, all good things together came to me with her and innumerable riches in her hands, right? There's a multiple, of benef uh, multiple <clears throat> a multitude of benefits that come with the wisdom of the Most High. Okay, not only do you know how to break down the scriptures, but you know how to live a life, all right, to where you're benefiting. <laughs> okay, if that makes sense. All right, you know how to be at uh, peace with your enemies. Okay, you know how to apply wisdom, you know how to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. All right, you know how to diet. Okay, you know how to eat healthy. You know how to deal with women and so on and so forth. All the, all the troubles, all the worries of, of life, all right, you have answers to that in the scriptures. Okay, it talks about that wisdom in Solomon chapter 8. All right, let me just grab it. Let me grab it real quick. While I'm talking about it. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 5. It says, If riches be a possession to be desired in this life, what is richer than wisdom that worketh all things? And if prudence work, who of all that are is a more cunning workman than she? And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtuous, for she chief of temperance. Prudence, temperance, self control. Prudence, the, the foresight, right, to make right decisions. So, lucky I got interrupted again. But it says, uh, Justice and fortitude. All right, fortitude is what? That's you know, basically a spiritual defense. 
All right, fortitude within your mind. All right, so of all say confidence. Okay, justice, you know, that's righteous judgment. All right, no one was right, no one was wrong. It says, for such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. See that? Nothing more profitable. But then it goes on to talk about more things. Okay, verse 8. If a man desire much experience, she know of things of old. You want experience? All right, you, know how to, you want to know how to conduct yourself? Or let's say if you're a young man, you want experience, wisdom of, of old men? You get that. It says she know of things of old. All right, you know history. It says, and conjuncture with a right, which is to come. What is to come? That's what prophecy, the foresight to see into the future. It says, uh, she knows the subtility of speeches and can expound dark sentences. She foresees signs and wonders and events of seasons and times. Therefore, I, pur I purpose to take to her. It says, therefore, I purpose to take her to me to live with me, knowing that she will be a counsel of good things and in comfort and cares and grief. Man. All right, so you know what season that you're in. Are you able to, you know, see the things in the world to understand what season that you're in? Right? And it's a comfort. All right, all that knowledge is, is comforting. Okay. So let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 in verse uh, 12. It says, And I rejoiced in them all because wisdom go before them, and I knew not that she was the mother of them. I learned diligently and do communicate her liberally. I do not hide her riches. Okay, so he learned diligently. All right, if you want, you know, all these beautiful benefits that I'm speaking about, okay, you got to, you know, put your foot forward. You have to, you know, put the work in. Okay. You can pray a lot, of course, you can pray a lot, all right, but ultimately, all right, you want the most high to put that spirit on you to actually go and study, study them things, right? So, uh, Proverbs chapter 2, uh, let me grab this, Proverbs chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 2, it says, So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as hid treasures, then shalt thou fear, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of the Most High. See? So that's what? That's putting in the work, all right, for the wisdom of the Most High. Okay? Searching for her as one that searches for silver and for hid treasures. Just picture that. All right, you have a treasure hunter. I'm thinking of Indiana Jones. Imagine. You know all the different booby traps you got to go through in order to get that that gem, that treasure? It's the same thing with us. All right, we have to go through trials and tribulations. All right, but ultimately, all right, once we have that treasure within us, okay, and that treasure is, you know, profiting us, it's all going to be worth it. All right, so it's just the same, it's just the same energy that we have to have towards the ministry of the Most High. All right, actually, you know, crying after it. Okay, so let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. In verse, was that it or not? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 13. I learned diligently and do communicate liberally. I do not hide her riches. For she is a treasure unto men that never faileth, which they that use become the friends of the Most High. See that? That's the ultimate end result of wisdom, becoming the friends of the Heavenly Father. All right, imagine that. Imagine me able to say that I'm a friend of God. All right, you know, you got people in the world who claim that. Okay, but they, they don't really truly, truly understand what that really means. Okay? So you're just on a different level, okay, than the, than the billions and billions of people on the planet. It says, which they that use become the friends of the Most High, being commended for the gifts that come from learning. And I spoke about <clears throat> some of the gifts that come from learning. Okay, and the, and the true ultimate gift that we want is the gift of salvation. All right, let's grab wisdom of Psalms chapter 9. Let's go. <clears throat> Two more chapters up. Wisdom of Psalms chapter 9 in verse 16. It says, and hardly do we guess aright at the things that are upon the earth. It's talking about us being in the flesh. All right, this flesh weighs us down, all right, and a lot of the times we're making decisions that we think are right, but they're, but they're really wrong. So it says, and hardly do we guess aright at the things that are upon the earth, and with, and with labor do we find the things that are before us, but the things that are in heaven who have searched out. And thy counsel who have known, except thou give wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. You see, the most he has to bless you with his, with his wisdom, with his knowledge. He has to bless you with the energy to even put your foot forward. Verse 18, for so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. See that? So that's the ultimate end goal that we want, all right, with this knowledge and wisdom that we have. That's the most valuable thing on the planet. We want salvation, all right, because when all these prophecies that brothers always bring out actually come forth, all right, the knowledge, the wisdom is going to be the most valuable thing on the planet. All right, everybody's going to be searching for who has the knowledge of the Bible. 
okay, when society collapsed, all right, it says that second Ezra 5, all right, it talks about that in the book of Amos, chapter 8, I believe, the famine of the word, okay, so we have it now, all right, and right now that wisdom is performing us, all right, in the image of Yahweh, Shah, Mashiach, Romans chapter 8, okay, and we want to be saved, all right, we want Yahweh Shah to beam us up, you know, chariots, okay, let's grab Romans chapter 8, I'll probably end it off with this, you know, I don't want to say, this lesson was edifying, uplifting through the spirit. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8. Let me see. Where is this at? <clears throat> Romans chapter 8. I believe it's Romans 8. Yep. Romans chapter 8 in, I can start verse 17. It says, And if children then heirs, heirs of the most sight, and joint heirs with the Mashiach, if so be that we suffer with them, we may be also glorified together. You see that? So we have to suffer with Yahweh Shai in order to be glorified with him. All right. When he received his glory, when he cracked those clouds. All right. Verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Okay. So yes, when you come, all right, when you have wisdom, it's going to try you. All right. But that trial is not worthy to be compared to the kingdom. The glory that we're going to receive in the kingdom, verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, of him who has subject the same in hope. Right, we're in the flesh. I spoke about that earlier. All right, because we're in the flesh, we're, we're going to fall short. All right, time and time out there again. Okay, well, where is this at? Oh, that was the point I wanted to grab. I wanted to point, uh, let me read you up verse 18 again. That's where I wanted. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Right, and that's in the kingdom. All right, so, 